The world's two leading narrow-body jets are variations of the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320. They might not be as mythical or glamorous a creature as their larger and more imposing siblings, such as the 747 or the A380. However, they are trusted workhorses of most fleets all over the world when it comes to short and medium-haul services. Indeed, for many of us, when we travel by air, we're much more likely to find ourselves on an A320 or 737 for most of our flights. Whatever your relationship is to them, these are the bread and butter planes of the industry. But how do they compare to each other? Let's find out in today's video. At first glance, the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737 are very similar to one another. The A320 has a slightly more rounded nose. If you like to anthropomorphize your aircraft, we think it might perhaps lend it a slightly more friendly appearance. The Boeing's sharp pointed nose and somewhat severe expression might make it appear a little more on the stern side, but again, that's just our personal opinion. Spotting the difference between the two aircraft is not the easiest of tasks. There are many variants of each and subtle differences between each of the models, not to mention the numerous add-ons and smaller details that can make it difficult to discern one from the other. Aside from the nose, the most noticeable difference, at least from the outside, can be found in the flight deck windows. The Boeing's windows slant downwards as they wrap around the nose, while the Airbus has straighter, more rounded windows. The engines offer another piece of the spotting puzzle. The later models of the Boeing 737 have had to flatten the engine covers at the bottom to provide more space for the engines to clear the ground. Meanwhile, the Airbus narrow body sits higher, so it gets away with perfectly circular engine cowlings. At the tips of the wings, Boeing and Airbus employ different winglet types to aid efficient flying. Boeing uses angular winglet technology, sometimes with two winglets, one pointing up and one down. These are referred to as a split scimitar, referencing the single-edged sword with a curved blade that's associated with Middle Eastern, South Asian or North African cultures. Airbus, on the other hand, uses what is called sharklets. They get their name from their appearance, which is similar to a shark's fin. However, some airlines use other types of technology, such as wingtip fences or end plates. It's not always straightforward to spot the difference in the plane by the wing furniture alone. Those are the main characteristics of the external surfaces of the two planes. But how about what's on the inside? At face value, one is hard-pressed to find any major differences between the two aircraft. They're both standard short to medium haul planes. Their cabins are arranged in a 3-3 configuration and sometimes feature a business class product suited to their range capacities up front. There are overhead compartments for carry-on luggage, a single aisle separating the seats, and usually lavatories at both the front and rear ends of the cabin. However, there are some discernible differences when it comes to passenger comfort and experience. The Airbus A320 has a wider cabin than the Boeing 737. Seven inches may not seem like that big a deal, Meanwhile, when you consider the width of an economy seat on a Delta Airlines Airbus A320 is 18 inches, whereas a seat on the same carrier's 737s measures 17.3 inches across, then you see how it can make a pretty big difference for comfort. A slightly wider seat is always welcome, even on short-haul services. Because the cabin is wider, the curvature is also less aggressive on the Airbus. It's only a slight difference, but when you're trying to rest your head at your window seat, this translates into more room for maneuvering on board the A320. You might also have noticed a difference between the windows. The 737 has very slightly larger windows than the A320, which one would immediately take to be a positive. However, they sit lower in the fuselage. This means that taller people may find themselves bending over to be able to see properly out the window. Meanwhile, the windows on the A320 are placed slightly higher, which puts them at eye level for the majority of travelers. In terms of other comforts, it comes down to the products of individual airlines, depending on which specific seats they go for and what other amenities they choose to put on board their aircraft. 
For example, Spirit Airlines, an all Airbus operator, offers the big front seat in the front part of the cabin to premium passengers. These have 36 inches of pitch and are 18.5 inches wide in a 2-2 configuration. United Airlines also offers first-class 2-2 seats on its 737s with 37 inches of pitch and 20.7 inches width, along with Economy Plus seats in 3-3 and 34 inches of pitch and 17.3 inches of width. Evidence suggests pilots seem to have mixed feelings about the two aircraft. The Boeing 737 has been around for a very long time. It's more familiar to old-school pilots in that it still uses a floor-mounted yoke connected to control cables. This directly manipulates hydraulically boosted control surfaces. It's a much more tactile experience and much more like traditional flying. The A320, on the other hand, uses fly-by-wire technology, relying on sensors and electronics to control the aircraft. Electrical signals sense the pilot's input and deliver the message to the aircraft controls. For a traditional pilot, this can feel a little unfamiliar, although the technology is well proven with an excellent safety record. Peter Bedell, an airline pilot who is type rated on both the A320 and the 737, outlined his thoughts on the two models in an article published by AOPA in 2016. Overall, he seemed to be positively inclined towards the Airbus when it comes to pilot comfort, while noting that the Boeing excels in some areas, as such as when landing in heavy crosswinds. Bedell said the 737 has rudder and aileron power to spare and is very conventional and predictable. Both Boeing and Airbus have brought newer, more efficient generations of narrow bodies to the market. Indeed, the NEO and the MAX are rolling out the final assembly lines in ever greater numbers. However, the previous generation is still far more prolific in airline fleets. If you're flying on a narrow body, for now, you're still most likely to encounter a 737-800NG or an Airbus A320-200. Considering this, let's compare the specs of these two popular but older generation aircraft to see how they stack up. Looking at the chart here, we can see that the 737-800 is slightly bigger than its Airbus rival, enabling it to carry more passengers. The Boeing jet is roughly 2 meters longer and has nearly 2 meters of additional wingspan. This makes it a slightly heavier aircraft. The A320 appears to have a better range, able to fly a few hundred kilometers further than the 737-800. Range and efficiency will, as always, depend on the particular route and cabin layout. Indeed, we would imagine a densely packed Wizz Air A320 might not fly as far as a 737 operated by Delta Airlines. Following the tragic accidents of two Boeing 737 Maxes and the type subsequent grounding in 2019, the A320 passed the 737 in number of orders for the first time. However, when looking at the aerospace company's official figures, the tide seems to have turned again. By the end of April this year, Airbus had received 16,118 orders for the A320 family. Meanwhile, when counting the 737 Classic, NG, and MAX, excluding the Combi version, Boeing's official order figures currently stand at 16,436. While it is always interesting to look at the numbers side by side, it doesn't really tell us much about which aircraft is better and which plane comes out on top is a very tricky question to answer. Because, in the end, the matter is somewhat subjective in many ways, and opinions can differ widely when it comes to picking a favourite between the two. Adding more complexity to the long-standing debate, passengers will have wildly differing experiences of both aircraft types depending on the airline and its configurations and cabin setup. Indeed, the Singapore Airlines 737 may be the height of business class comfort for the type, having no resemblance whatsoever to a Ryanair 737. Again, on the Airbus side, flying Spirit or Frontier will be an incredibly different experience from Cathay Pacific or Qatar Airways. As such, we want to turn it over to you and if you prefer the Boeing 737 or the Airbus A320. Which airlines do you think offer the best passenger experience for each of these aircraft?
Tell us which of these prolific single aisle jets gets your vote and why by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.